Hi booktube, I'm here with my nice warm cup of tea on this cold March day and I have a uh, currently reading update. Uh, so I've been DNFing a lot lately because I learned my lesson uh, after 15 dogs and how horrible it sent me into a reading slump. It wasn't just 15 dogs. I managed to push my way through 15 dogs. Um, but it was also combined with nostalgia being a really bad book and then just being overall really disappointed with the selection for Canada Reads this year. Um, which I'll talk about in another video. Um, I've been not so forgiven because I want to read books with good writing. That's all I want to read right now. I don't want to have to pit up with bad writing. Um, so yeah. And I have another thing. I'm reading a book right now that has so much potential to be good. It's The Break by Katrina Vermont, which is Canada Reads selection. I've been making my way through it slowly just because it is so bogged down by editing errors or things that could have been fixed by a good editor. And I've been noticing that a lot in a lot of more recently published books is that they're lacking a lot of editing. And I'm not just talking about grammar. I can forgive grammar. Everyone makes those mistakes. I'm talking about like cliches. Uh, needless repetition, clunky writing, awkward writing. I don't know if everyone else had this when they went to school, even in high school. If I phrased something awkwardly in an essay, it, the teacher marked awk, awkward, awkward, awkward. And I just want to go through <laughs> and do that to these books. So I, I started in the break just like highlighting all these mistakes, all these things that could have been fixed with a good editor. So I'm I put the break aside for now to concentrate on something that hopefully is better. Um, so uh, I finished Company Town, which is the one book I've managed to uh, actually kind of enjoy for Canada Reads this year. I'm just going to take a look at my notes. I wrote some stuff down. The pacing is okay. Um, I had a little bit of awkwardness with that as well because it would go it goes really, really slow and then all this stuff happens in one scene. and. Um, it kind of happens really fast and you don't doesn't fit in with everything else uh, it was really nothing special it was you know an okay read it felt like a YA that was written for adults if that makes sense and kind of like it had these kind of tropes that you were expecting but dealt with more mature issues um, a plus for it is that it did talk about sex work um, and the issues surrounding that in uh, Canada in particular yeah I recently DNF'd another one called uh, Fruit, um, which I think is more of like a YA middle grade about a boy in grade 8 who um, is obviously um, LGBT somewhere. He's either transgender or gay, um, and I don't know where because I'm not going to finish the book because it just felt a bit too immature for me uh, in the writing style and everything. So yeah. And it gave you the false promise. It says right on the cover that it talks about talking nipples. And I'm halfway through the book and it hasn't happened yet. Um, and I figured if you're going to use that as your uh, marketing point, that it should probably happen before the first half of the book. Um, audiobooks, I finished Gathering Storm. Um, it's the first one written by Robert Jordan in the Wheel of Time series, if you didn't know. And uh, I'm okay with Robert Jordan's writing. Uh, I can see the differences having... Uh, spent so long with, um, not Robert Jordan, sorry, <laughs> Brandon Sanderson is the one who took it over. Uh, but having spent so long with Robert Jordan's um, writing, I can tell the difference in Brandon Sanderson. Um, the characters are staying true to themselves, but um, he's not as subtle in his storytelling. It's kind of very, the clues that he drops are very obviously clues. Um, one thing that's good is that I'm listening to it on audiobook and uh, uh, Brandon Sanderson tends to use names more often instead of just the pronouns, so it's easier to follow along if you kind of have to pay attention to driving for a while. Yeah, and the pace has definitely picked up. Like, there's, it's known that Wheel of Time kind of drags in the middle, but uh, now things are, are happening, falling into place, done, let's move on to the next part of the story type thing. I just started Towers of Midnight today. I'm um, hoping to finish the whole series by May. And I have a uh, some video ideas I want to do about it. Now what am I actually currently reading? <laughs> I have two books uh, right now. Um, the Life and Opinions of Tristam Shandy, Gentleman, by Lawrence Stern. Uh, this is often said... Uh, 
is one of the earliest examples of, we can't call it postmodern, but kind of like experimental fiction, in that uh, I'm already 34 pages into this autobiography, and uh, he's only just talked about the marriage of his parents, um, and is going to talk about his conception. Uh, but he goes off on all these tangents and stuff, and it's really quite uh, funny, but also interesting um, to see the way that he's writing, because even mid-sentence he'll be like, go off on a different tangent, and it's it's good. I've already used so many times in just 34 pages. Um, yeah, and uh, if anyone knows what this is, I don't know what's going on there, why there's a big black box on that page, but oh well. Um, and then I just started reading this last night, and I am loving this. I can tell that this is going to be a favorite of mine. Um, this is Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. If you don't know, it's about a circus family who purposefully mess up their children uh, while they're in the womb by taking drugs and experimenting with stuff so that they have these geeks, these freaks, um, to keep their circus going. But we follow um, one of the daughters and her adult life. And it is so fascinating. Oh, so fascinating. Um, I just want to read this part for you. This because it's so, like, I think it, it um, epitomizes what's going on so far. In the story, the mind souls of three theoretical physicists find themselves reincarnated after dying hideously during their search for Schrodinger's demon cat in the bodies of itch mites inhabiting the pubic hair of a particularly obtuse Los Angeles policeman. I think that's just funny. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm currently reading right now. Let me know what you're currently reading, and thank you for watching.